So sekarang kita terus ke sesi yang seterusnya Malaysia on creation Criticism and the performative space in between So untuk ini kita persilahkan moderator kita Adriana Silakan And I will leave Adriana to maybe introduce the panelists yeah. But we welcome the panelists Pei-Yin, Mark Te, Fashali, Sandy Chu Okay, kita adjust a bit uh, speaker at the back ya. Yeah? katakan bahawa sesi kami akan uh, dua bahasa tetapi lebih mungkin uh, lebih pada bahasa Inggeris uh, tetapi bila ada sesi soal jawab dan apa-apa yang nak tanya percayalah yang kami semua memahami dan akan tersampai soalan anda dan kalau ada nak bertanya uh, uh, even sewaktu uh, panel sedang berjalan kalau ada yang betul-betul nak bertanya yang sangat tak faham ke silalah angkat tangan akan kami bantu um, thank you very much um, on behalf of the panel uh, for for the invitation to be here uh, it's really really good to see everyone here um, as CK mentioned uh, my name is Adriana uh, I identify primarily as a theatre maker a playwright of progress but I'm also a translator and writer and researcher and my plan initially for this session was I wanted to read out from the Pesca Playlet booklet uh, the background of all my uh, panel members and then it occurred to me that it's a bit long and really when you have somebody here I don't know maybe it's, you shouldn't talk about them in the third person kind of thing and let them uh, introduce themselves so without further ado Hello, uh, my name is Pei Yin I, uh, I'm an interdisciplinary artist, uh, mainly working with performance, photography and spoken words. Um, currently, I'm doing visual anthropology. Uh, hi, I'm Sandy, uh, Sandy Chiu. I'm an actor, lighting designer, and I'm currently dramaturging for a show. Uh, I'm an, um, and in general, I'm just a theatre practitioner that cover, like, you know, one big take cover a lot of <laughs> uh, wear many hats kind of situation. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Hi, nama saya Fazli. Uh, Fazli Fazli. Saya theater maker. Uh, first, saya consider jadi saya first sebagai director, playwright, uh, writer, apa lagi? Educator. Itu je. Itu je. Itu je. Hai, uh, nama saya Mark Pei. Uh, saya juga uh, performance maker dan macam penyelidik uh, researcher. Um, dan saya buat kereta tapi uh, lebih kepada macam dokumentari uh, kereta. Um, dan kebelakangan ni saya juga ada buat beberapa projek uh, yang macam curatorial um, dalam exhibition format. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, to begin, saya juga nak berkongsi. Um, kami dulu tentu hari kami dah berjumpa Kami berlima dah berjumpa And uh, we uh, we spent about Nak dekat 2 jam juga uh, Berbincang dan cuba nak mengupas Apa inti parti uh, topik hari ini sebenarnya So we've deliberated And considered the panel topic And we've decided After much conversation And maybe some pauses in between And questions and trying to understand One another um, We've decided to go with it as a conversation Of fellow artists and primarily the important thing we want to say is that we all wear multiple hats um, that's what we, 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 
we thought was really important to highlight about the, just to give context to this discussion. Um, this panel will respond to the question of how criticism or critique can be a part of the creative process and how our struggle with it can also be insightful um, as to into understanding how and where criticism uh, fits into our art making. Um, so I thought to begin, but it would be nice just to um, have us, uh, I, I'm just going to ask this question to all the panel members. Um, how do you feel about criticism and critique uh, in, your, in your own work? Uh, do you seek it out? And if it comes, how do you respond, especially if it's not very good? In working on a show, you have a recent show. Okay, uh, for me, I personally uh, am curious uh, to hear feedback just because um, that's what we are doing, that's what the group is doing, that's what we are trying to do, and then there's also the curiosity of like what people are picking up from it. And I'm, I'm curious about the different feedback from different types of people. So it's like my parents, you know, would say some, would come with different points of view or they'll pick up different things. And then versus a theater maker or a friend. So, uh, I mean, because one of the, okay, part of the introduction would be also is like, I'm also interested in audience development and I am in part of what my interest in theater is also conversations. Uh, and how it creates conversation, how it uh, provokes conversation, how it might, you know, just open up conversations maybe. And so, uh, I'm, yeah, it's just the curiosity of that exchange. Uh, but as a maker, uh, there's also a line when uh, you need to know also which one is useful for you to go ahead with. And, uh, which, and also at the same time, there are certain ones where it's also how people give, like even like directors. There are also like different types of ways directors might give a critique. Some will be like, you know, or even teachers, it's like, you know, that was a piece of shit, you're useless. There's also that kind, you know, or um, there are those that might break down or some is very vague. Uh, and I'm of the school of thought that maybe we'll bridge it halfway. And then, okay, that we're all also struggling with the communication tool language or whatever and then um, but at the same time for my own mental health I must draw a line that okay whatever is said or whatever happens is also is like that's the work and that's my self work and then uh, so then also I can take the work the you know the, the uh, what is also trying to be put across maybe a bit more um, I don't know what's the word for it maybe objective sounds like big fella but yeah you got, you got to work, so... Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm um, going to work later. Saya rasa... Uh, tak, macam tak mendapat perhatian. Uh, maybe tak mendapat perhatian dari segi uh, orang yang selalu menulis tentang teater. Jadi saya tak ambil peduli pun kalau dia menulis. Uh, dan sepanjang pengetahuan saya, tidak uh, saya jarang berjumpa orang menulis kritikan uh, tentang Japanese theater uh, ada beberapa tapi dia cuma post-post dalam uh, blog uh, dalam Facebook something masa tu orang tengah sibuk uh, main Facebook dengan Twitter uh, jadi tak banyak tak ada akses uh, apa yang saya buat pada ketika tu adalah uh, kita buat sesi Q&A after show uh, untuk dapatkan uh, feedback audience kan? tapi I found out uh, Lama-lama dia jadi sesi puji-memuji Jadi saya rasa macam <laughs> Ini tak betul ni uh, Dia bukan kritikan Jadi saya rasa macam uh, Benda ni bukan yang saya nak Selepas tu saya fikir uh, saya, Untuk teater saya Saya tak nak ada uh, benda alat tu uh, Sebab dia tidak menggalakkan Saya lebih suka bila keluar Dia cakap terus dan sebagainya Kalau tak suka, maybe dia boleh terus balik Atau maybe Jumpa lain masa atau bercakap ataupun tidak bercakap langsung tentang dia tu uh, ataupun menulis atau apalah uh, jadi untuk pengalaman saya sendiri sebagai theater maker saya tak ada pengalaman uh, tentang karya-karya saya yang ditulis dalam uh, apa 
dalam platform yang betul-betul valid lah macam kritik di public ke sekuriti dan sebagainya uh, tetapi uh, saya juga bekerja, menulis sebagai uh, menulis tentang data uh, saya rasa uh, sebenarnya itu saya menulis sebab sebab peribadi sebab saya rasa data ni dia bukan macam filem dia dirakam so dia kena datang tempat tu dan uh, kita saksikan so apa yang saya cuba masa mula-mula menulis tentang data adalah sebab saya tak nak saya lupa tentang data yang saya tengok so dengan cara saya menulis tentang apa yang saya tengok lah uh, pada awal-awal penulisan saya memang kalau saya tak suka saya tulis tak suka je apa benda lah data ni dan sebagainya tapi lama-lama saya perasan orang mula baca lah dan ambil kisah tentang penulisan saya dan saya cuba lebih berhati-hati bukan berhati-hati uh, uh, saya melihat menulis kritikan juga adalah uh, satu kesenian uh, tentang melihat uh, persembahan itu jadi tentang merekod benda yang saya telah tonton jadi lemah pun saya ada menjawab soalan ke? menjawab cuma saya ada saya nak tanya sedikit saja oh. kalau untuk your own performance kan bila mendapat kritikan yang Uh, tak berapa elok uh, Just a really quickly, how do you respond to that? I know you kata you tak uh, suka yang menguji melambung Saya so, 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 so okay je Kalau ada orang yang tak clear dan uh, Maybe saya akan tidak, Saya tidak akan respon terhadap uh, Performance saya yang dah siap tu hmm. uh, Sebab saya rasa Once dia rasa tamat Dan saya tak akan ubah uh, Tidak ubah apa-apa yang besar Major changer dalam dalam performance tu Uh, sebab saya rasa tidak adil untuk orang yang datang hari pertama ke dua ketiga ke empat so biar ada orang experience something yang similar uh, dan membacanya uh, something yang uh, very similar tapi my recent show yang saya buat uh, IU Game so kita buat preview uh, internal preview dalam uh, dengan Vifax member sebenarnya ni dan I komen ini yang sangat tajam dan memberi kesan lah saya cakap pasal ni you are the weakest point dalam uh, semalam ini jadi saya semacam uh, dah lama tak orang orang tak cakap kat saya macam tu and then we discuss uh, dengan tapi masa tu show belum siap so kita discuss balik dengan ada uh, collaborators dan think apa yang patut kita buat dan kenapa and then before before kita buat preview tu dah I dah memang prepare uh, tiga soalan ini adakah dia orang macam tu uh, adakah show ni lame Uh, does it work, the, the, the framework dan apa lagi soalan and then walaupun dia orang tidak menjawab soalan itu tetapi saya dapat rasakan bahawa ketiga-tiga soalan yang saya prepare before the preview jawapannya memang tak dan saya tahu saya kena buat something terhadap that piece uh, saya tak dengar apa yang kritik cakap <laughs> kecuali kalau datang daripada <laughs> kecuali <laughs> uh, No lah, I think uh, secara peribadi um, dan mungkin ada kesenambungan dengan uh, previous discussion uh, tentang komen Abdul Rahman pasal uh, who's a critic, the death, the critic as well um, because I think kalau kita nak membuka lebih besar um, then apakah ekologi kritikan yang yang ada so ada beberapa lapisan saya rasa uh, of course there is the audience that comes to see the show and lepas If you want a very quick uh, update, you can find it on social media very quickly. It's the best thing in the world. And that's all everyone says, uh, you know, and then you go and see it or whatever. Ataupun, um, uh, kritikan daripada a few websites, um, Oshali punya blog, uh, I think sekarang surat khabar setahu saya dah tak menulis review langsung dah. So, uh, cara kita melihat persembahan dalam uh, mainstream media ialah tentang pasaran sahaja. So, dia merekakan audience juga sebagai seorang uh, consumer sebenarnya ya. dan bukan seorang yang terlalu berfikir ya. So, itu satu cara untuk kita boleh tengok ni juga Dan of course, internally bila, bila you buat satu projek, you ada, saya ada, saya sendiri punya criticality dan juga ada community orang yang participate in, dan collaborate dalam projek tu uh, Saya juga uh, seorang member Firebox, so pengalaman uh, yang kritikan daripada orang-orang lain dekat Firebox itu juga uh, saya pernah mengalami um, dan of course uh, bagus kalau you ada beberapa orang yang mengikut 
your work uh, yang you boleh buat dialog sama ada mereka reflect ni melalui uh, tulisan uh, ataupun mereka um, apa ni uh, pengajar ke lecturer ke dalam or whatever lah you know even like artist from other disciplines yang yang ada um, a kind of stake dalam your work dan your trajectory and of course yang paling aku nak dengar ultimately are the ones who have an understanding tentang apakah trajectory saya uh, apa yang saya cuba buat sekarang dan juga kalau dia boleh tahu projek-projek yang saya buat of course that is the most interesting but of course strangers can also give you really like pleasant, surprising, tajam kind of feedback as well people who are seeing your work for the first time and can just call you out on, on certain things so ini bagi saya macam satu kira ecology lah kritikan so sama ada you nak um, dengar lapisan mana dan sebenarnya kita lah kita dengar semua lapisan tapi lah like, you nak peka pada yang mana lah uh, pada masa yang tertentu um, so I think for my contact maybe I, I do performance in site specific spaces mainly in public space so I think for me I don't think like my like what I do has has a formal like critique like support group or lack of better words. Mungkin aku kecil banyak pun. I don't know. Ada orang nak tulis. But I think like I get direct feedback from the audience because uh, what I particularly like about working in public spaces is that the audience doesn't have to the person nak duduk situ tengok aku. <laughs> so I I think like for for me like um, the direct. Um, audience responses, the feedback I get, lah. And other than that, um, sometimes when I perform at festivals, like you meet the same artists, and then you will give feedback. So more from peer peer feedback. When it's, when it's not that great, the feedback from the peers, how do you respond? Okay. Um, maybe because also mainly I work with improvisation, so kadang kadang also. I, I just accept that I'm not perfect, lah. I can't. Um, and and you know the biggest critic actually is sometimes myself, like in my head, because sometimes I think that the performance is not good, but actually other people think it's actually okay. Mm, so I just learn how to let it go, lah. Um, so even if there's nobody watching, you just have to continue on, lah, right? Because mm. once you have doubt, I, I feel like uh, you, especially during the performance, it is a uh, a bit like taking away from from people. Um, and one of the philosophies that my teacher has is uh, when, which partially stems from Bhutto is that uh, if you perform, you can't feel it too much. But too much I'm So it's like a balance between uh, just letting the movement come. Yeah. But doesn't mean that there's no intention or uh, no purpose. Thank you. Thank you guys. Um, if I may, I want to ask Shali actually. I know that in our conversation, uh, I'm very when I'm drawn to enter a conversation with you because you are an educator and it seems that you are in an industry which is about giving commentary and, and making an opinion and providing an opinion um, about what goes on in the world. So, in the world of theatre, saya selalu kenal Shali kalau ada saya rasa kita pernah berbual dulu yang Shali pernah berkata yang ada memang ada kekurangan pengkritik dalam bidang teater di Malaysia dan khususnya dalam bidang teater berbahasa Malaysia, berbahasa Melayu jadi boleh dapatkan pendapat lebih dari Shali sebenarnya ruang ruang kritikan terbuka tapi sebab tidak ramai orang nak nak mengambil bukanlah saya cakap saya mengambil tugas ni sebagai penelitian tapi tidak ada tidak sekarang tidak ramai yang menulis tentang teater dalam bahasa Melayu. Uh, tetapi kalau kita baca uh, kritikan-kritikan uh, teater uh, yang lain, uh, dia seolah-olah subur dalam bahasa Inggeris. Kita boleh tengok dekat Critics Republic, uh, dekat arts, sekarang ni arts teater uh, yang cover uh, performing arts seluruh Asia Tenggara. Dulu kita ada kaki seni dan uh, sekarang dah tak ada lah dan, tapi selain itu di mana kritikan uh, itu boleh dapat uh, so masih ada lagi juga kritikan tiada dalam bahasa Melayu tapi dalam Dewan Bahasa which is aksesnya tidak pantas kan 
show bulan 1 dan baru ni show bulan 12 saya fikirkan baru keluar bulan 3 dia tidak orang pun macam dah tak, tak ada tak ada rasa nak bercakap lagi tentang itu uh, dengan dunia sekarang yang internet modern apa uh, keluar dekat blog dan sebagainya itu lebih pantas jadi orang still nak engage dalam that conversation tapi dalam bahasa Melayu ni memang tidak banyak saya tak pasti kenapa tidak ramai yang mahu menulis dalam bahasa Melayu lah uh, dan saya rasa penting untuk tulis dalam bahasa Melayu ni sebab uh, bukan yang saya, dan saya dapat rasakan bahawa ada penggiat-penggiat teater yang uh, tega menulis dalam bahasa Melayu dan uh, ada seolah-olah mereka berpendapat bahawa atlet bahasa Melayu perlu dimajukan dan dengan pendapat itu dia tidak menonton teater bahasa lain bahasa Inggeris dan sebagainya maybe sebab limitasi bahasa uh, dia tidak fasik maybe ya saya saya tidak uh, assume uh, jadi saya cuba uh, saya secara conscious memilih untuk terus menulis dalam bahasa Melayu supaya akses uh, kepada pengentasan uh, dalam bahasa Inggeris atau bahasa Mandarin atau bahasa Melayu dapat diakses oleh pembaca yang hanya dapat membaca dalam bahasa Melayu saja. Uh, dan supaya mereka juga mempunyai pembacaan oh ini yang berlaku dalam teater bahasa Inggeris, teater bahasa Mandarin dan sebagainya. Uh, terhadap itu walaupun dia tidak menonton sebab perkembangan uh, teater uh, di Malaysia ni memang boleh kata dia agak berpecah-pecah. Uh, walaupun kadang-kadang pembuat ni lebih kurang sama saja. Uh, tapi itulah akses akses bahasa itu uh, saya rasa perlu ada banyak lagi tulisan-tulisan dalam bahasa uh, Melayu untuk memberi akses kepada mereka yang uh, tidak fasih bahasa Inggeris dan juga yang memang stick untuk terus tekan membaca bahasa Melayu Thank you Shalim, I have a quick question to follow up on that because what really struck me was when you said compared to uh, theatre and other languages you think there's not enough um, crit uh, the field of like criticism or critique in Malay theatre isn't as, isn't as strong or robust, let's put it that way. Why do you think it's very important um, specifically and, and giving commentary as an observer, a practitioner in Malay language theatre in Malaysia today? Why do you think it's very important for Malay language theatre practitioners to have that a, a more vibrant like, critique ecosystem? So Sebab bila mereka buat, bila, bila tiada pengkritik kan, saya, saya menganggap bahawa uh, pengkritik ni perlu berada dalam ekosistem ini. Uh, sebab kadang-kadang dia akan, uh, maybe ada pengarah ataupun pengkarya yang akan refleks terhadap kritikan ini. Which is dia akan cuba membuat something different supaya uh, orang lain akan membaca karya ni dari sudut yang berbeza. Uh, so bila ada ramah, bila ada buat ramai orang yang mengkritik melihat sebuah persembahan itu dari perspektif yang pelbagai seorang pengkarya ini dia tidak stuck dalam satu posisi yang sama saja of course dia akan uh, juga menjadi lebih kritikal terhadap karya-karya yang dia cuba buat eh asyik orang asyik baca bahawa aku ni seorang feminis ya padahal aku tak ada intention untuk buat karya-karya uh, yang berbentuk sebegian so dia akan probably akan cuba cari different entry point lah uh, dan kalau bayangkan jika dia ada pengkritik so the circle tu tak bergerak lah dia stay kat situ je so dalam bahasa Melayu kebanyakannya orang akan refer balik-balik refer Namron balik-balik refer Desmond balik-balik refer Hatta dan that's it lah dia, tak, dia tidak berkembang so apa lagi selepas Namron So, siapa lagi selepas Dinsman? So, sekarang ni maybe siapa lagi selepas Anomalis, selepas RS Jika tiada kritikan-kritikan itu Dan RS ini Dan mereka-mereka ini bukan setakat uh, RS, Anomalis Tetapi mereka ini yang berada dalam uh, ekosistem ini perlu berkembang uh, Mencabar diri sendiri untuk Maybe melihat daripada perspektif yang berbeza Uh, saya bagi cu satu contoh uh, Kamal Sabran Saya pernah uh, jumpa dengan dia Dia cakap dulu dia buat painting uh, Figure painting Kemudian dia tukar pada ex uh, abstract expressionist uh, Expressionism Kemudian dia bertukar kepada Art installation Sekarang dah jadi main noise pula uh, 
saya kata kenapa mula dibuka ni dia kata dia cuba nak cabar curator sebab bila dia bagi satu uh, exhibition and then curator akan susun work dia dia kata kalau bagi figure painting mudah untuk curator susun and then <laughs> And then dia bagi yang lain supaya creator pening Tak tahu nak susun macam mana Tak tahu nak melihat uh, work dia macam mana So rasa itu baru hubungan antara creator yang critical terhadap kerja-kerja Kamal Sabran Baru itu baru dua orang uh, hubungan antara dua lah Cuba bayangkan jika ada banyak lagi orang yang uh, reflex terhadap work uh, kita So saya yakin bahawa kitaran ini akan lebih laju Atau mungkin mati atau saya pun tak tahu. Ah. Thank you, thank you very much, Ali. Um, next, I'd like to um, speaking from, I guess, the external gaze kind of criticism and critique uh, that was uh, our brief exchange, Ali. I'd like to now move to the idea of being, a, for lack of a better term, like an in-house critic, and I call that in a production. The in-house critic is usually the dramaturg. Um, and Sandy, I know that although although you might shy away a bit from claiming the identity of a dramaturg, I know in our sorry in our brief exchange with my work as well, I I view you very much as somebody who can uh, provide that view, um, uh, like an independent view uh, for the betterment of, of of a creative output. So I know that recently you currently you are a dramaturg for Dust, and also you had a very you have very uh, sharp views uh, on the the role the role of being a, a, a critic uh, internally when you're part of a production, and I'm especially drawn to um, if you could touch a bit upon the differences in that role between a devised theatre performance and also like working with a prepared text. Anything you'd like to share? Um, so yes, I'm working on a production called Dust, which is. Uh, where in a device production, there are different levels of device, and in this production, there's no dedicated um, playwright. The, the, the play is being developed with the five actors and a, a team of like, we call it five creative team, of a creative team, because even though it makes up of a, a director, a dramaturg, an assistant director, uh, an SM, and uh, ASM, but everyone also kind of uh, has a little bit of uh, input in it and like for example, I'm half covering, you know, AD kind of thing. Um, uh, Ali, who's uh, the assistant director, is also covering, um, you know, creating some of the text, writing some of the text and so on and so forth. So just to give a context of this production, uh, which is different than other device. And so uh, when when we got together, because not everybody has done their roles, this is the first time doing it at this capacity, and also those roles, uh, there was a lot of having to find out what what is needed in this process. So in a, a, a ready text or ready script, like, because sometimes we even in device, you might start with a text. You might start with like bullying, which not did. They started with, you know, the balling um, um, text, but with, uh, let's say, a ready script where already a playwright and maybe a director may have already gone through a whole development process. We are now starting at with the whole team now. So it's the for people coming in from like who has only done ready text, you forget that there is now that whole development process that you have to give in. So you know like we're not just coming in and we're rehearsing a play. We are coming in to create the play, to find out what is this uh, what is this monster even, you know, is it uh, what animal is it? Uh, which what's the scope? So um, so like for example with this one, we started uh, or like the director started with a theme which is death and aging. And then as it goes on it's like death and aging are two very big topics. Or, you know, and then um, as we went on, uh, and it's being interrogated, what what is it? Why? Why this one? Why? Which part of it? And and then as we go along, it was like, okay, maybe she's more interested actually that it's not really aging. You know, aging was just like uh, it, it was the entry point to her interest in death or something like that. Uh, or she just kind of thought, oh, because 
death and aging are related and then when you discover that it's not necessarily there. And then after that we also have, uh, first, so first it was dealing with the director, what's her potential scope, what's her interest, what's her, uh, I keep asking things like what's the core that we're going to be bouncing off. So then at least it gives us a, 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 a what's the starting point so we're not just trying to cut but we also know where it's, the, it's being sprung off. And then uh, after that, once we got like and decided on the, the casting, then it was also then bringing in the, where the cast out is, what's their questions, and then at the same time, it was also for the director to decide what level of collaborative process she wants. Does she want to, uh, okay, we're going to do this mission, we're going to do this is what the play is, and then uh, the cast respond to it, or uh, with this case, is like we realized that there were, they each come with very strong and very rich experience with death. Although they are all young people. The age is between 20 to 40 some, uh, 43, I think it's like that. You know? So it's within an age which is supposed to be prime adulthood. But they've all been kind of like, you know, um, impacted by death. So it's like, let's focus on that and make use of that, you know, because you, we can't comment on like an older person's um, situation unless we want to go and do research on that. So if we did, then do we then go into do field studies? Do we need to find out more about it? Do we need to uh, do case studies? Do we have time for it? We have four months, which includes rehearsals. And because everyone are also not doing this full time, uh, that means we only rehearse uh, three times in the weekdays and then uh, in the night on the week, uh, on weekdays and then uh, one half day rehearsal on a weekend, which is not a lot. And, um, and so it was a lot of like dealing with scope. Then it was also dealing with understanding of process and words. So, uh, so one of it was like, okay, this is the development time or this is um, the preparation time. So what helped was also I was working or I've taken classes with like, uh, one of the teachers, his name is David Glass, and he gave this five uh, sort of structure that I was like, oh, I've, I've been using it for all my uh, processes, even with scripted work or what, as an actor, not necessarily even as a advisor, which is preparation, origination, um, organization, manifestation, and then reflection. So just to like, okay, every time we go in, on every day in rehearsals, we'll be doing that. Like at least I was like, okay, we need, this is preparation time. So I know the difference between preparation time versus, you know, now we are uh, originating, or now we are, now is the editing time. So like in originating, you just do, 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 try, 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 you know, play, play, do, do, try. Okay, now we've got to sit down, it's like, all right, should we do this? Should we not? Should we continue? Should we um, things like that? And then, uh, and then as it goes on, and that's like every day, but also like as a whole. So then it just helped to give a structure to a very nebulous uh, process that also requires a lot of definition. And it was that it was like, okay, so Esther, do you want? Is this is this what we're doing? Is this you know? Do you want do you want a writer? Do you want us to write? Do you want you know, are we going to do personal stories? Are we going to do research? Are we going to, you know, are we going to do case studies and, uh, you know, trying to understand other people's experiences? And then at the same time, working with what triggers and what compels also the actors. And sometimes it's like, hey, this sounds interesting for Esther and myself. Then it's like the actors are like, ah. So then it's like, do we push and say, hey, we should just try this anyway, or? Uh, okay, then what I, you know, what you interested? So there was a lot of uh, touching base and getting to know. Sandy, if yeah. I may ask, then with um, thank you and with this uh, the experience that you had so far, do you see yourself being a dramaturg in the future for more productions? Is it something that is it an entry point into the process of theatre making that you think will be with you for a while? Um, I don't know. I've been thinking about it. Uh, I've been thinking about it for a while because I'm interested in asking questions. And then when I was like trying to Google what what is it, what is the scope, and there's also different points of view. What's the scope of Jonathan uh, is asking questions? But it was also um, like I don't. I kind of appreciate 
just also just be the actor sometimes it's like when you're the dramaturg you're on the directorial team and it's also it's like you know i feel like I'm, you have to be the kaka yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, and so I'm also working on another device production where it's like, ah, it's nice, even though it's like extra rehearsal time, but I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm doing a lot of head and processing work here. And then I jump into that and I'm just like, okay, just jump on the floor and just roll around. Okay, director say this, we just try this. Ah, I don't know what's, what this is about. Doesn't matter if you leave your brain at the door. So it was, uh, in an ironic sense, it was like it actually helped me also balance this other side where it was a lot of processing. And then because um, people come from different backgrounds, points of views, and so there's a lot of explanations. So that was also quite tiring. So I don't know. I don't know if I, uh, I feel like, yes, maybe I have been inofficially doing it in, um, even as an actor, like dramaturgical work maybe. But as an official, I was like, you know, where, yeah, I actually do enjoy being the person on the floor a little bit more than like, uh, so the yeah, 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 I think it's many very, very selective projects, many very selective projects, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, Pei Yin, uh, we are not unaware of the fact that uh, in uh, the five people sitting here, um, four of us are quite taken with text. Uh, we, we quite like working with text. Uh, yeah, and we're quite, un, I guess, uh, unapologetic and unabashedly text artists. And I know in our conversation, it's been very insightful because um, you're actually quite, uh, quite critical of text. And I remember thinking that as a conversation between artists and about process and appreciating um, our, our, our creative journeys, I'd like to hear a bit about your journey uh, to where you are now with regard to this. Um, I suppose I'm critical about text in the sense I feel like um, especially in Malaysia, uh, text, text create boundaries just because some people just don't speak English X, Y, Z. But also, I, kill me if you want, but uh, some theatre productions I don't really enjoy because they, like the actors rely too much on the text to convey the emotions that I, I just don't particularly enjoy. I feel like there are nuances in the body that comes with the text that I just don't see in some, some productions, not all. And, and uh, even though I, I, I did spoken words, slowly I started um, moving more towards dance. I, I mean, I don't call it dance, I call it movement. So I, I feel like with, um, with the abstraction of language, uh, in a certain sense, maybe I have my own intention girl or story, but, but there's, a, there's this, um, the abstraction kind of gives space for the audience to insert whatever experience they have. So maybe maybe whatever I perform actually has to do with like women's rights, but but you know you don't get too pushy. Eh, women's rights all the time, but and but maybe like the audience see it as like about mother and sister, and grandparents. I mean, then I like that that openness in that sense. Huh? Yeah, mainly I, I just at this not at this moment actually for ten years maybe I I, I don't fancy text that much, but doesn't mean I don't want to. <laughs> But not in performance. Thank you, thank you, Pei Yin. Um, Mark, I know when we, when I, uh, we first had a quick chit chat. I was, my interest in projecting like what I like, what I was interested in hearing from you is your experience in uh, maybe the nuances and different criticisms or critiques that you get when you tour. Um, going from, I know Five Arts has has has, has toured to different countries. But uh, when we met, I know the conversation veered to something maybe just to get your, your opinion on being critical about the sources and uh, what we what we devise from or what we draw inspiration from in our art making. I think that we'd like to hear more from you about that. Yeah. So maybe uh, Sayu, ada a few disclaimers because I also work as an educator until recently. So uh, mungkin secara Saya uh, tengok theater secara vertical dan horizontal. Um, vertical dari segi like apa yang dah berlaku dalam sejarah theater uh, di sini dan di tempat lain. Um, so bila ada persembahan yang dipentaskan di KL malam ni, um, kalau you tahu, you tahu lah. Sama ada benda ni ada uh, kesinambungan atau ber bercanggah dengan benda yang sedia ada dah. Um, and of course, um, there's a relationship between the vertical and the horizontal that I'm always uh, interested in. So, um, bila kita sebagai satu community pengkarya uh, memberi kritikan kepada uh, di antara each other lah 
um, I guess kita berdiri di mana and maybe it's an idea that uh, it's not mine but it's introduced by I think from the visual cultures punya field um, this idea that the difference between critis, critic criticism and criticality yeah so critic is like the critic the art critic the theater critic yang serba maha gila kuasa and he's a he's usually a he right he's a gatekeeper is a tastemaker is the one who says this is shit this is good go see it don't whatever 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 criticism is a kind of more recent idea tentang um apa fungsi kritik kan Okay, dan lebih uh, dia 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 all the isms are there lah. Your uh, post-structuralism, your feminism, your post-colonialism. So basically, kritikan dan power. Boleh tak kita kritik balik kepada kritik yang maha kuasa itu? Kau cara kau pandang atau punya tiada macam mana sebenarnya? Kau guna frame apa? Ini boleh dikatakan bila saya nampak fasihi dengan mana si kana punya dialog. Uh, dalam newspaper saya boleh nampak uh, ini berlaku lah ya yeah. uh, so carry on macam <laughs> uh, dan dan nampak yang yang uh, a more recent term um, it's kalau saya kritik saya kena recognize dan saya juga uh, seangkatan dan saya face uh, challenges uh, and all the same shit uh, whatever 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 limitations lack of funding lack of support blah 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 not enough time all that sort of stuff that everyone faces so with that in mind when i critique someone else's work i'm still not going to let the person off easily right uh, i can disagree with you punya aesthetic atau politik dan sebagainya uh, tapi saya boleh cuba memahami dan empathize dengan apa you punya sebulan um, uh, dan boleh boleh support you lah tapi support very critically ya yeah. so itu satu nuansa yang saya rasa sangat penting uh, untuk kita fikirkan jadi bila membagi kritik of course you just want to be cheeky and putuk that's fine also lah but i don't find that particularly useful or productive uh, anyway um, uh, but i guess another way is also if we want to come back to kritikan secara menulis i guess uh, I guess sebagai um, orang yang interested dalam political dan horizontal increasingly saya less interested kepada kritikan tentang satu show sahaja um, macam show ni biasanya dalam reality ni sendiri ada soalan ni sendiri dan ada jawapan ni sendiri <laughs> and good lighting, bad lighting, whatever you know like like uh, so I appreciate more the kind of kritikan yang uh, is more comparative boleh mengambil uh, sudut pandangan uh, berkomparatif tentang apa yang berlaku di KL. So, I mean, as an as an example, um, I mean, I, I was just brainstorming. Sebab saya uh, uh, ke belakang ni tak berapa tengok teater uh, di KL sebab saya jadi bapa baru. Saya so, jaga anak. Um, but from very quick scan of Facebook, saya rasa macam um, mungkin mungkin patut ada kritikan Uh, atau analisa atau compar- comparison tentang kita yang menggunakan education system ya yeah, sebagai satu uh, site untuk contest identity lah bahasa lah kewarganegaraan lah dan sebagainya so of course I'm talking about kita dia I'm talking about IQ rock I'm talking about politik uh, kena lah macam names otherwise no fun right uh, I'm talking but also kalau you nak pergi balik kepada macam um, parah karya al- alfen saat Uh, aircon, uh, karya Shannon Shah dan sebagainya. Macam mana kita boleh membandingkan? You know, that that's one example. Uh, mungkin satu lagi example uh, kalau kita pergi daripada um, hanya konten, tapi juga infrastruktur dan ekologi um, uh, seni persembahan. Patutlah dah keluar sekarang satu kritikan terhadap sistem training dalam, for example, yang membandingkan aswara. New Era, Sunway, USN, UM, comparatively, and see like what kind of uh, cultures are being produced uh, in, in through these universities. Because these universities and uh, academies or whatever are like, dah dah, dah cukup masa lah, 30 tahun, 20 tahun, 15 tahun, uh, to, to compare and membandingkan apa yang, so I'm interested in these kind of 
ways of thinking about Britain sekarang. Uh, yeah. Zoom out lah. Macam mana nak zoom out? And sort of, uh, yeah, take it, take it as a. I use a little research language, to, not like a, a, a cross section, but like a longitudinal study of like what's going going back and kind of finding a common theme, and then uh, lending it to your criticism or your critique. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In these last uh, ten minutes or so, I would like to open the floor to questions. Kalau ada beberapa pertanyaan, saya harap semua sudah lihat yang ini. Uh, perbualan santai uh, jadi jangan segan jangan silu kalau ada apa-apa pertanyaan uh, saya ada dua soalan uh, saya soalan pertama adalah perlukah pengkritik jadi aktivis teater juga ataupun aktivis performing arts dan kan kritik macam dia jadi orang biasa tapi dia selalu tengok teater dan dia boleh kritik Uh, soalan nombor dua adalah uh, ni yang saya dengar, I don't know whether this is the truth or not ni saya dengar uh, adalah macam contohnya macam Christian Jade uh, one, was once a critic also tapi dia stop to criticize sebab dia nak jaga hubungan baik dia dengan orang lain I, I don't know whether it's true or not but this is what I said lah uh, sebab as a critic, you tend to like be very critic lah, memberi kritikan and then that mungkin memberi kesan kepada hubungan personal antara dia dan orang lain so apa komen semua orang tentang dia ni uh, dia, 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 dia juga performance maker lah performance maker dia dia bukan orang yang membuat ya, yeah, theater saya rasa, saya rasa tak ada masalah tentang tu uh, uh, sebab artis artis kena being critical lah tapi uh, sebenarnya being critical tu pun dah cukup untuk dia jadi seorang pengkritik sebab dia mengkritik pada work-work dia sendiri ya. uh, tapi cuma ada dia nak menyam, dia nak being critical terhadap work orang lain dalam bentuk secara oral ataupun secara menulis itu terpulang uh, tapi pada saya uh, di Malaysia memang tradisinya sebegitu uh, kita memang memakai banyak utopi ya, sebagai pengkritik lah uh, tak ada seorang pun yang dekat sini yang oh, I'm a choreographer saja saya tak menari langsung atau saya tak buat apa-apa work so, yeah, so itu memang saya rasa sistemnya memang sebegitu di sini di Malaysia jadi saya rasa tak ada masalah uh, seseorang pengkritik itu juga membuat uh, work dia cumanya maybe saya secara pribadi lah kalau saya boleh share sebab being critical, uh, kadang-kadang kita perlu melihat pers- uh, perspe- se- sebuah persembahan untuk melalui perspektif yang berbagai Lagi sebagai pendidik, banyak teori sangat yang macam, ah, oh dia ni ism ni Tapi bila kita, bila saya membuat, benda ini mengganggu saya uh, Eh nanti orang cakap, ah, aku ni pak, sebab dia terlalu mengganggu uh, Dan struggle ini adalah, uh, saya sedar sendiri sebab uh, being artist, kita sangat-sangat mementingkan uh, intuition Sebab tak semua orang ada intuition yang uh, Intuisi dia lah, lain lah Semua orang ada intuisi yang berbeza Kesedaran apa lah? Intuisi uh, naluri Naluri yang berbeza Kenapa kita pilih merah daripada biru? Something like that Sebab kita rasa tu, oh, merah lebih cantik uh, So benda tu adalah sangat-sangat uh, unik pada setiap uh, orang Bila saya jadi pembuat Saya cuba meraihkan intuisi tu lah Saya cuba biarkan intuisi mengawal saya Daripada pemikiran-pemikiran yang kritikal ini Sebab tu saya rasa uh, Bila saya biarkan alumni saya uh, Mengambil tempat Saya akan Dalam masa yang selepas itu maybe being critical about that pula dan saya menilai kembali intuisi saya lah uh, dan saya rasa memang tak ada masalah even sometimes bila saya menulis tentang sesuatu pun saya uh, pentingkan intuisi saya apa yang saya nampak sebenarnya dalam teater ni sebab kalau saya tidak membenarkan intuisi saya uh, ber, apa lebih ke hadapan saya akan jadi banal lah jadi macam uh, kan uh, Peter Brook kata dia Orang yang mengkritik sekadar menggunakan, dia seronok menggunakan teori-teori ini 
dia badly critic lah sebab dia rasa seronok oh aku dapat melihat show ni melalui perspektif ini lepas tu dia seronok lepas tu oh, show ni adalah perspektif ini dia seronok kita perlu kata tu badly lah dia, dia mati, dia stuck so saya rasa even sebagai uh, pemerintah saya percaya tentang puisi saya Yeah. Uh, oh, second question is um, as a critic, kita banyak kritik karya orang lain, so that may affect the relationship between the critics and the performance maker. Uh, how does a critic or how does that? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, so I think at the end of his, oh, well, the last few decades of his life, memang Christian J dia putus uh, hubungan dia dengan geng-geng sejenerat. Beberapa uh, pengkarya seperti LV, I think there was a very big fallout between them. Uh, because I think Christian J criticized um, tulisan dan uh, pengarahan Sai Awi lah, right? Um, but I think that comes with the territory lah, like um, uh, even, especially if you're a practitioner, because the double hat, triple hat, four hat wearing uh, is like, you know, I thought you are Sa'angkatan dengan aku, you are my colleague, you have directed my place, I'm talking about them. Um, so like, you know, what what's going on or whatever it is. Um, but both are dead. So we need a little bit of hypothesis. <laughs> um, but I think, mungkin, uh, mungkin, kita patut uh, sensitive sikit tentang kritikan tak semestinya hanya berlaku dalam uh, tulisan. Of course, itu satu cara yang sangat bagus untuk membekukan satu pandangan. Tapi it's a snapshot, lah, you know, like it's a snapshot of that moment. Um, I feel like, for example, kalau kita tengok semua tajuk-tajuk forum, workshop, performances yang ada dalam uh, pesta play learning, ini boleh dinampak sebagai satu uh, kritikan yang sangat performatif oleh Moka Moka Ing kepada um, theatre atau performance practice di Kuala Lumpur pada saat sekarang, 2019. Kalau kita zoom out dan kita zoom so mereka mungkin tak membuatnya secara uh, menulis, Tapi cuba try uh, on creation criticism and the performative space, microfiction, uh, uh, apa tu cliche, um, this yeah throwing away ownership whatever. I mean it tells you a lot. Kalau you just baca the titles aja, and you, this is a this is a. I mean uh, I know they are setting up so they cannot respond. So I could just patu api lah. I could not I could not put this out there. So I, so I feel like you can also do it this way. This is also a good way, you know, to, to, to kind of uh, make us think a little bit more. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, I want to ask: Should criticism be restricted to merely art, the artwork itself, rather than masuk ke ranah pribadi? Because it is an open secret to some of us about how some people can be abusive to work under or work with. Jadi adakah bila kita membentuk satu kritisisme kritik, adakah kita harus bahagikan bahawa oh ini hanya kritik terhadap karya sahaja dan bukan terhadap ibu ibu. Perhaps it's also it boleh um, then it's also maybe it's like defining it could be criticism about the ways of making data it might be a you know there is now criticism uh, and I think maybe because in Malaysia at the moment when you think of like data critics it's only about production not like you know what like uh, Mark is saying it could be also about uh, institutions it's also could be about the way we are choosing to do things it could be uh, um, like one of the, the current popular one is also about the mental health of people who are working in theatre. It's like the irony of it's supposed to be about humanity and yet the, the work style is so uh, sometimes can be inhumane or uh, it breaks people down, it drains people, I mean burnout is high and things like that and then why it's like you know people cannot make a li you know you can't live and so it's it's not the most also humane uh, situation or choice to make and people are asking questions about that they are also asking questions about like should we make it more accessible in the uk there's a huge 
um, what they call that, uh, it's, it's, it's not huge, or it's ongoing criticism about the cuts in arts funding because uh, it affects especially scholarships to schools, to drama schools. And if like drama schools at one or to a certain extent is considered like a gateway into the industry, then it's like uh, and only rich people can uh, be, uh, can afford to do drama school. Then are we only get, going to get stories from rich people? You know what about the middle class, which you know a lot of the older actors came from, and so they're very very adamant about that. Uh, and then yes, when the Me Too campaign and all this come out came out. Um, the Royal Court, the artistic director, Victor, I think her name, Victor Featherstone or something, actually uh, made, uh, I don't know what would it be called, like a, a huge initiative to call and gather all the practitioners in the UK or like whoever's around to talk about this. They actually turned their whole theatre spaces into different, uh, one was to share stories about um, all the abuses that people have been getting and then what it is was that people submit stories and then uh, other people will read it so it's anonymous that was i think in their main theater and then i think the smaller theater had like another like event that was maybe more yeah. and then at the foyer there were uh, legal aids that were there to help those who want to find what okay i have had you know experiences of sexual harassment what can i do about it you know, there and then at the same time, they also um, it it involved uh, practitioners from across London. So then there were like twelve of them, including like uh, artistic director of the National Theatre, and they they made a commitment that yes, we are going to to do this. And yeah, just a quick question then: Would you, if you were to provide criticism, would you draw the line between the creator and the creation? Um, in like what do you mean, like when I'm writing it, or yeah, let's say yeah, when you're writing, yeah. Would you? Uh, I, yeah, then I would like actually want to like clarify what am I going to be referring to. It's like maybe it's the same thing. It's like I think the work is fine here, but I also wonder, you know, is this a, the best way to do this? Uh, because even styles of doing work, different styles of acting, like some of us might like, oh this was a great way, but at, one point, um, or it was very popular, like the method acting or the what, but it also has like lines where you also can be abusive. And then you have people like, hey, I like that, I think it's fine, it's the way to break people down, it's the way to move forward, okay? And then there's some people like, I adamantly do not believe you need to do this. Uh, there are other ways and we're going to explore other ways. And, um, uh, I am still negotiating how I deal with it as a human because I, yeah, like, you know, whether I, uh, then I, I also, because I'm, I'm not really an activist, but I guess, like, I feel responsible to whether I'm supporting it as a, uh, I don't know, is it enabler or like, you know, because if you keep doing work anyway and this person keep, like, doing shitty things or like, I mean, it's abusive and then you're still taking it and then you go back and then you just complain about it. I. But usually I'm kind of half up, quite outspoken. <laughs> uh, I, I'm trying to, like, uh, you know, I learn, or I'm learning the ways to at least, like, how do you, uh, you got to talk about it, but doesn't mean that you have to, like, you know, uh, kill each other in the talking. But we still have to talk about it. So it's like, where's the line? It's like, you know, if I'm comfortable about this, or you don't, is this a, you know, is an issue or not? Um, there was one, one year, um, I used to be with a group called Shakespeare and Mr. Pai. And there was going to be a uh, black face used in one of our trailer. It became an extremely heated uh, conversation in the group and all that kind of thing. It's like, yes, it was a choice of, and that time is like, it was a very uh, stressful period because we didn't have time. We did not have time to deal with this. And at the same time, if we throw it out and we are not doing it properly, it's like, uh, and you say you want open conversation, but you have no hit space to deal with a very complicated conversation. Then you still want to do it, and then like you know, what I mean, basically, it's learning to own decisions, uh, take accountability, and all that kind of thing. So I, I, yeah, I don't know how I cannot make a broad, broad. I think it's like a case to case basis, and uh, and usually I kind of prefer like yeah, lah, let's talk face to face and deal face to face because otherwise it's like I feel like every time you talk, 
um, when you say something nowadays, it could be taken into so many different contexts if you don't explain it because people come from very, very different uh, worlds, backgrounds, understanding of even the same thing, like sexual harassment. Some is like, why is that sexual harassment? No, I don't think that's sexual harassment. Why should that be an issue? So are we supposed to be baby people or, you know, or like, okay, victim, you should always believe the victim, you know, things like that. But we also spend a whole, uh, many, many years trying to fight, you know, uh, guilty until proven, uh, uh, yeah, uh, innocent until proven guilty. So there's all these things. It's like, I feel it's, it's more dangerous for us to just like, it's this or this, but we have, it's like, maybe if there's anything, it's like, I would promote, like, the com let's have a conversation, let's talk about it, and then let's deal with it, at least for this situation, for this, your lines and my lines, and like, and then we own that, uh, for now, and then uh, uh, be clear about that, instead of like, yeah, and then after that, when people come, and then you're like, uh, and complain, or there's an issue, and like, oh, I didn't think about it, it's like, no, you, call, you, you made the decision. You know, or something, I don't know, something like that. Um, so, I just want to add my opinion, not, not my expertise. Um, in terms of, um, you're asking about if you have a relationship with the, the creator, right? For example, something like that. Uh, if you have a relationship with the creator, so do you judge the performance based on the performance itself or your relationship? Is it that, or is it mainly based on the abuse side? It, so you don't necessarily have to know the person, but you've known of the person. Like, would you judge with their, with their individuality, with their private life, spill into your criticism of their artwork, or not? Um, personally, I feel like um, if you have a close relationship with the creator, in the writing, it will be good to give a context of where you are as a writer, and maybe also like to kind of state like your situation when you see the performance because your own situation could also affect your reading of the performance so give some con personally i feel like if you give some context to where you're coming from not your long history of your life is okay just maybe one or two sentences and then and then give your reading of the, the performance um personally i feel like that's fine and and for me i suppose like then, then maybe with the question we have to ask is a few things that it's about power. So are we here to critique the person or are we here to make the industry better? Um, maybe like for Mark, like he wants to take a more broader, broader view of um, the whole theatre scene. Gun. So that's his intention. So maybe we can ask ourselves what's our intention. And then another thing is also, I mean, other than just relying on the critic, uh, I'm also guilty of this. I remember when I did Theatre Atas Poco, like uh, Sunny Sudin kept asking me, you need to write about your experience, you need to write about your experience as an act actress. Masatu, I didn't know, but now I also realise that, you know, to even if you are the performer, to add context to this whole dialogue, instead of just relying on the critic all the time and, and almost feeling disempowered, you can write your own perspective, you know, like, as a performance maker and enrich the whole dialogue, instead of just focusing so much on critic. Um, so I suppose that in that sense also, partially being in academia help, because in academia, there will, the whole point of academia is to get dialogue. There's bound to be somebody who disagree, and and that whole if somebody critic your your paper, girl, you write a response. So I'm pretty sure theatre is not like that. But I'm, I think I want to push back also to maybe instead of relying on the critic, maybe as a performance maker, director, performer, you can write your own, but also clearly state your own context. I think we all remember that we just want to enrich the whole industry or scene. Comes up fine, huh? but if we want to go to the Kuto side, then uh, no comment. Huh? Um, I, I just want to add on that. It's like also hearing the question again. It's also the, yeah, maybe it's like it's going back to the why of that criticism. Because um, even as you're like saying, criticizing a show, you know, sometimes people are like, you know, that actress, that actress just don't know how to act. But sometimes it could be the direction, it could be the writing, it could be there's so many other la and I'm of the school of thought that I, I, I would rather we actually try to find out where it is or find out or something like that, that it's not sometimes theater making, you may only see this, but it's not that one person alone is in charge of it, there might be a lot of other things. And whether like um, the, the, the 
person's way of working or what uh, and the, so you can still talk about the quality of the show as it is but you can also add to it so you can still talk about them as separate things but whether you feel but you can also in your criticism say that it matters in that sense uh, because then it also clarifies it's like yes I still think the work I enjoyed it or like the performances were great, the, 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 the script was interesting, but um, I feel uneasy about this, or like, is this, oh, do we need to ask a question where, do, does it need to be true? Does it need to be honest? Does it need to be, uh, then it's, because then it's about, it's not just about criticizing the show anymore, it's about criticizing uh, intentions and choice. So actually, it's actually broadening, you know, what is being criticized, I think, um, yeah. Thank you, thank you everyone. I'm well aware that we've gone five minutes over time, but I would want to say thank you very much for being an active and involved and engaged audience. Terima kasih, terima kasih kerana mendengar.